Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of premium quality guitar, bag, and camera straps, handmade in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Check out their website to order your own custom creation and play in style. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Bradley Guitologist here. This video I may not put on my main channel because this is probably going to be a fairly simple one, but I wanted to take a look at this uh, Technics turntable I got from a buddy. Uh, he was cleaning out. And I ended up getting this thing from it for like 15 bucks, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Uh, this is an upgrade over the other Technics that I bought at, um, I guess it was Goodwill that I showed on the channel not too long ago. It's a Technics turntable for, let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not, $7.99. So this is a model SLBD27. I'm missing the dust cover lid. Also missing the stylus so I've already ordered the stylus it does work it turns um, and it's got all the feet and everything intact as well I've got another one of these Technics turntables where the feet are all broken and chewed up on it so I might take parts off of that I think that one has a dust cover so I might make one uh, one good one out of the two this one is a direct drive it also has a standby for the uh, speed control it also has uh, it also has the strobe for setting the speed and this is an SLQD3 direct drive uh, this one also has a repeat feature that the other one did not have so uh, that other one's going to be uh, moving along to someone else I think I have it spoken for in another project um, so I need to dust this thing off and make sure it works uh, this is uh, this one's got a little better a uh, little better cartridge in it too this is a sure pro 8 cartridge where I, uh, the other one was um, the original Technics cartridge uh, where I had replaced the stylus now I'm not sure on the stylus this thing might be this thing might be shot but then again maybe it's okay I'm not sure Looking forward to checking this out, but as you can see, it's just grimy and dirty, and um, I don't even really know if it works properly. So we're going to check that out and see if it works. This also has uh, sensors uh, for whether you have a record on here um, and what size of record it is for the repeat function. So what it does is once it goes around, if, you're, if you have repeat on, how does it work? There you go. You see the little, you see the little trigger that will pop up when it gets to a certain point to feel if there's a record and if there is a record it will tell the arm where to go and where to set down so that's a few more features than the other one uh, this one had some broken feet on it and what I had to do was take the feet off the other one anyway because it was being installed in a, a hi-fi stereo so it was a good opportunity to use the feet from that uh, I used foam under the other one anyway because it needed to be covered uh, more thoroughly underneath it um, so basically they'll be getting a turntable without feet but um, that gives me a couple of extra ones in case these go again and I'll show you what they look like here's what here's what the feet look like they're basically just a piece of rubber um, for isolation and it has a spring here uh, for further isolation that's good if you don't want your bass notes coming through um, feeding back through your stylus uh, but yeah I've got kind of trusty rag here I'm gonna clean this thing up and then we'll plug it in and see uh, if it actually works okay I've been cleaning a little bit on this thing and uh, pulled the stylus just to get a little better look at it I don't I don't know if we're gonna be able to see very much but I might be able to see more than we did see fairly dirty okay so that might be about as good of a shot as we're gonna get of it and I really don't know enough about styli to know what's uh, <laughs> what's in good shape and what isn't by looking at it maybe there are some people who could tell me I may order another one of these just to be on the safe side because I don't want to put my good records on something that's uh, unknown state you know but if it sounds good then I might roll with it usually if it sounds good that means it is good 
And if it sounds bad, that, that means it's chewing up your vinyl. <laughs> uh, this one's also a little nicer. The, the tone arm just feels nicer than the other one I had. Um, that I bought at Goodwill for $7.99. Uh, that one did not come with the uh, dust cover either. So, uh, the, you know, this one, even though the dust cover's cracked, it's still an upgrade over not having one at all. I did the same thing to that one too. Whenever I got it, I spent a little time sprucing it up. It didn't need very much. It was actually in really good shape. I mean, I was surprised for $7.99. The only thing it lacked was a, uh, well, in addition to the dust cover, was a um, stylus. So I ordered one of those off the net for, I think, under $10. So I think all in all I had about, you know, $18 or something in that thing. Because of the resurgence in vinyl, some of the some of the nicer ones are getting out of hand. I guess it's kind of always been that way with audio file equipment, but you know, I'm not going to go spending huge amounts of money on something like this. I just I need a daily player for this room. I've taken some time lately and set up my uh a little stereo system in here. I, I bought some Bought some of those uh, Roland Cube little speakers, amplified monitors, and I've got those on a couple of stands. I'll show you those later. Dug some of my other stuff out of the garage. I've got my I've got my Technics cassette hooked up. Uh, the other room I've got my CD player, my hundred disc. CD changer, which I might actually move into here because I spend more time in here. Or I might just find find another one for this room because they're so cheap. I can find them at eight on um, I can find them in Goodwill all the time, they're really cheap. And of course, you don't know the working state of them when you find them at Goodwill, but sometimes sometimes you get stuff that's there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it just needs a little bit of TLC and and they typically for that kind of stuff for like CD players man a lot of that stuff is just going for nothing or next to it and CDs also CDs nobody wants of course right now but uh, there may come a time whether there's a resurgence in those too just because you know because you do get artwork with those you do get a physical product it's not like buying uh you know, MP3s. It's not like streaming. At least, it, you know, if you want, if you're a fan of physical product, then CDs are still a physical product. So, it checks that box anyway. This one seems to be a little more adjustable uh, on the tracking as well. There's a setting here for 1.5, 1.2. 2, 5, and 1.0. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, that'll be grams. And the other one does not have that setting. And then there's a probably in a uh, this probably either adjusts, fine tunes it, or takes the weight off. I'm not sure which. But that should be correct from the factory. At least that's what it says right there. So it should be adjusted to 1.25 grams for maximum anti-skating and correct tracking force. All right, um, let's take the let's take the pad off and see what we've gotten ourselves into under here. Should just come right up if I can find the spot. There we go. Actually, that seems pretty clean. This will be the break, I believe. Or no, that's the uh, that triggers that triggers these feelers. And this is uh, magnetically driven. This is direct driven. So um, 
it's driven by the actual motor so there's nothing coupling the motor the motor is the is in this is built into the spindle At least I think that's how this one works. Actually, on some Technics turntables, that is how it works. But on this one, as you can see, this thing has a worm gear that's attached to the DC motor. That worm gear uh, spins another gear, which looks like it spins yet another main gear. Uh, so I don't know if this could really be technically called a direct drive turntable or not. Here you see a little closer up picture of the DC motor and its worm gear. And you also see the little gear that it turns. Uh, so, you know, whether this is direct drive, um, is, I guess, is a matter of debate. Okay, see, that's telling the mechanism there is no record. But if I hold my finger here, should think that there's a 45. So this will go over and... Well, no, it didn't, did it? Okay, so I'll hit the... Hit the start button. Okay, but so if I hold both these down, it should believe there's a 12 inch record. Okay, well there it saw no record because I guess I failed to hold them down. Let's try it again. Yeah. Okay, so there it thinks there's a it thinks there's a 12 inch record, and I have the queuing on so it won't drop. Let's try it with a 45. There we go. Now it's got it right. Right there. And I should be able to also stop it. Yep. Okay, so the functioning actually looks like it works. Uh, let's go ahead and get um, power plugged into it and see if it actually works. Yeah, so here's the dust cover and you can see it's got a big it's got a crack here. It looks like it was dropped, maybe started here and cracked it this way or somebody sat on it. I don't know, but uh, it's seen better days. But if nothing else, we can at least spruce it up a little bit. But, you know, it's always going to have the crack. At least I, I'm not sure if there's a way you can uh, repair that. There's some miracle things that we can do with plastics these days. Maybe that could be repaired. Look at there. Somebody painted painted their room and forgot to move their turntable. <laughs> yeah, I just wish I knew uh, if there was some method. I might I might Google this later and see if anyone has tried anything to fix stuff like this because it would be nice to uh, it would be nice to be able to kind of fuse those pieces back together. I wonder if heat gun would just destroy it. I'm sure it would, but I, it's just wishful thinking that I could fix this crack. I've never, I've never known anybody to fix anything on plastic like this before, but it would just be, it would be neat to know if anyone has any experience with trying to fix or at least stabilize cracks like this so that they didn't, you know, if they didn't extend and break pieces off further. Cause if this crack extends down all the way to the base here, then this whole thing will start, you know, coming apart which I definitely don't need. So it'd be nice to be able to stop it right there if nothing else. Um, so yeah, if anybody knows any methods or anything to do with this, whether it involves heat or my, my soldering iron, maybe I could, or even drilling it out, I probably could drill it out and stop the cracking. Yeah, see there's the cracks just kind of continue this way. And there's another one that's continued sort of this way and one there. I'm wondering if it would be worthwhile to drill a tiny hole right there at the end of that crack to kind of stop it so it had nowhere else to go. And the same, you know, same up here too on the top. 
with this little portion of the crack. We'll see where it stops right there. Maybe even stop it on the other end too. I don't know. I just don't want to put a bunch of holes in the dust cover if it's not going to help. I think we'll leave it like this for now and uh, get it back together and at least see if we can spin some records. So that's it. Thanks for watching.